Welcome to our second Girl Boss Rally in LA. Who's ready for an amazing day of celebrating, learning, soaking up inspiration, and meeting some truly amazing new friends? To kick things off, please give a very warm welcome to the woman who started it all, founder and CEO of Girl Boss, Sophia Amoroso. Can you guys hear me? Okay. It didn't work at the last rally. Um, how's it going? Wow, so many phones. Are you, are you guys excited? I'm excited. This is a pretty cool room. Uh, but most of all, I'm really excited about you, about everybody in this room who came from far and wide to make today happen. This wouldn't happen without you. The energy in this room is because of you. It's yours. It's not ours. It's not girl bosses. It's and girl bosses everyone's. Um, and this, is, this rally is three times larger than any rally we've ever had. It's like, yeah, it's like, it's like a city. Um, has everybody checked out the, the next floor, the second floor? It's, if you haven't, it's amazing. And I know, and we kind of already did this, it's really cheesy kind of like public speaker stuff to do this, but I want help filling up this room. I, I'm not great at public speaking. This is going to be very short, but give yourselves a hand. Thank you. And thank you for doing what we do best here at the Girl Boss Rally, for reaching out to the person next to you, for saying hi, for saying hi to the person in front of you at the cafe, behind you, and for exploiting the fact that, yes, we have our phones out, but we're not on Instagram right now. We're in a room together, and we're going to experience some pretty great things, and we're going to meet some pretty great people and hopefully leave with a co-founder or maybe a new best friend. Um, and yes, it's a beautiful event. Uh, we have cool walls and lots of things to do. <laughs> lots of things to photograph, amazing speakers, super inspiring women. But the beauty of today is that we get to be together and truly immersed in this. We don't want to be instabate. And yes, again, it's Instagrammable. And yes, we're well dressed, but that doesn't mean that we don't want to create something that's real, that we don't have substance because and it doesn't mean that we're not sharp as fuck, because we're sharp as fuck. Are you guys sharp as fuck? Okay. The team at Girl Boss is sharp as fuck. Um, so the incredible and inspiring team at Girl Boss have spent countless hours, weeks, nights, days. I don't know if there's anything else in the time, years? I mean, year, it's been over a year now since we've been doing these. Programming, the most interesting keynotes, workshops, talks, fireside chats. For everybody here today, there's a lot to see and a lot of incredible women. And there's some pretty amazing gift bags that Maggie in particular knocked it out of the park on. So I hope they're, I hope they're great. I hope you love them. Um, and those you'll get at the end of the day because I know some people were asking. Um, and <laughs> what? I mean, I'd, I'd be asking. Um, and it's crazy, like it's crazy that this many women, 230 cities, 36 states and 19 countries have flown themselves here for the Girl Boss Rally. That's crazy. I think a lot of people, a lot of people would think this is like a bunch of LA girls and some might have flown down from San Francisco and maybe someone from Phoenix and I know there's someone here from Phoenix. Um, but uh, that's pretty special. I mean, 19 countries. Uh, I mean, and to spend our day improving ourselves and meeting the most incredible women and again, like leaving maybe with a co-founder or an investor, that's pretty special. But some people might underestimate how special that is, how special each of us is. And I know that sounds so cheesy, but we are all really special. We're all really different here. We're all coming from really different places. And they might underestimate us because we didn't go to the perfect school or have the perfect resume or the perfect parents, because we got our career started late, because we changed gears, because we followed our hearts, because our first job was at Subway, <laughs> because we're at the Girl Boss Rally and not a $10,000 executive conference in a stuffy convention center. It's easy to underestimate. It's easy to judge. Others will do it. We do it to ourselves. I do it all the time. I mean, I underestimated that I could do this and I'm doing it, but it's not done yet, so we'll see if I can get through like 10 minutes of public speaking. 
Um, but there's a fine line between self-awareness and self-doubt. I'm still trying to find it. And I like to say that I don't know the difference between my intuition and my anxiety. It's really easy to conflate those things. And I don't know if that's ever going to go away. Um, and like I said, I underestimate myself all the time. Am I capable of this? Am I doomed as a leader? Can I get up and do it again? Will they think I'll build another shitty culture? Will I build another shitty culture? Can I lead from the front for the first time in my career after 10 years of running a huge company and not delegate preaching the vision and mission of the company to another executive? Which I did, and I don't think that really works when you're the founder. Uh, and by the time I figured out that was what I was supposed to be doing at Nasty I was like eight years in and the thing was built and you can't really undo things that like happened without intention, unfortunately. Will they all think I'm like a mostly fictional character from a critically panned Netflix series? <laughs> that, was, that was rough. And did they pan me as a person? Or a, or a character, or both of us? Ouch. And you know, I was gonna give a talk today about resilience, because people like to say I'm resilient. But it's an old story. It's already an old story. It's a story I'm tired of. And I don't want to be the unlikely story of a college dropout who did these things and wrote a book about it. I'm very grateful. I mean, I loved the book, but it was me four years ago. I had to change my haircut. I'm sorry. It's changed a lot, um, many times. I don't want to be refreshing. I want to be fucking formidable. I want to make myself shake in my own boots. I mean, or w witchy little shoes. I want to be so capable that I terrify myself into doing something new every single day. And I want to rewrite my story just like everybody in this room, every day. I want to change my mind. I don't want to be the same person tomorrow that I was today. But I know there's a lot of people out there watching and underestimating me, but they always did. And yes, I was celebrated. I was celebrated because I was an outlier. And as grateful as I am for that, it just seemed like they all thought it was so cute that this 25-year-old started an eBay store and built it into a real business. You know, as Cardi B says on her new, <laughs> on her new album, which I highly recommend if you haven't listened to it, uh, I went from making tuna sandwiches to making the news, literally. <laughs> I still make a lot of tuna sandwiches, so, um, you know, it was so cute that this girl had tattoos and she had choppy bangs and she dressed weird. Oh my God, she's edgy, a young woman, a dropout. I became a caricature of myself. I became symbolic because society underestimates women. And all of the praise I got reinforced for me the collective underestimation that culture places on us. And like I said, self-awareness, it's important. But self-awareness can easily manifest into self-deprecation, which I'm very good at. But when you let that slip, it does some real damage, damage that lowballs ourselves. But finding that fine line is easier said than done. Because everywhere we look, it feels easy to compete and compare. And you guys have probably heard me say this before, but don't compare your hustle to their highlight reel because they have a hustle behind the scenes and they're just showing the best parts of their life. It's what we do. Instagram was made for us to just share the best things and we're gonna do a lot of that today. Uh, and oh my God, the vacations. They have the house, they've got the partner, they've got the baby, they got the vacations. And they look happy and maybe they're happy. I hope they're happy. <laughs> I hope you're happy. <laughs> I'm pretty happy. Um, but behind the scenes, they're fighting with their partners, their baby's crying, their roof is leaking, they're losing their shit, and we're all dealing, we're all dealing with the same shit, right? And it looked like I was winning. It looked like I was winning at Nasty Gal. It really looked like I was winning, but nobody knew what was happening under the hood, and it looked like I was winning until I wasn't anymore. And that's the case with everybody. You know, they say fake it till you make it. And uh, I really believe in that. I'm doing it right now. <laughs> and that doesn't make you a fraud. It allows you to cast that line out to catch the fish that you shouldn't have, that you can't swim out to, right? And manifest what you want because you're putting it out into the universe.
it's like Indiana Jones. I don't know if you guys have seen this scene, but it's the scene that has been like, it's been like very, I guess, symbolic to me my whole life. And Indiana Jones walks out. He's like looking for the Holy Grail. And then he walks to the edge and there's this huge chasm and the Holy Grail's like through this other wall. Does anybody know what I'm talking about? <laughs> and, you know, it's the leap of faith scene and he has to like, you can't, he can't see the bridge and, you know, he has to have some faith and he, it's not going to happen for me right now. He steps out, and there's actually a bridge, and he gets the Holy Grail, and I think he feeds the water to his friend or something. But it takes that leap of faith to find even the smallest Holy Grail, and it takes a lot of confidence, and maybe more confidence than we think we deserve or should have. Which brings me to our mission at Girl Boss, to redefine success in a world where a bunch of cis white men invented a magazine about money and put themselves on the cover and somehow I got them to put me on the cover. <laughs> uh, but it's a new era for women, right? Does it feel like it? I don't think it's going anywhere. I don't think it's, I don't think it's gonna go, I don't think this is a trend, guys. I'm sorry. But by making learning fun at Girl Boss, we arm our community with knowledge. That's really what we wanna do. We don't write about the news. We're creating content that hopefully allows us all to go take some action in our lives. And we're learning from you guys. We're learning from another, uh, not another. The Girl Boss Gang fa Facebook group is such a, like amazing Petri dish of this. Our office is. We're all trying to figure out how to make it work. And the, the, this room has so much knowledge. And half of, I mean, so much of what we do at Girl Boss isn't about what we do as a team. It's not about me. It's about everyone here being connected digitally, in person. I mean, we can only do this a couple times of, out of the year, but we are building something really exciting um, that I'm kind of announcing right now, but like I don't have any screenshots or anything. Um, but I want you guys to be the first people to sign up for it. It is a community where everyone here will have a profile that's the most beautiful profile that you can have on the internet that doesn't just show what you do, but shows who you are, um, or you'll have your own URL. Because we know we don't, well, I'm not gonna like name check anybody, but like there's not a lot of great networking platforms out there. Um, <laughs> And, uh, and we'll all be able to connect with one another. So pull out your phones or write this down to be among the first people that end up in our beta. It's just the future.girlboss.com. And there's, you can enter your email address in there, but you don't have to do it now. And I'll remind you at the end of the day. And uh, with the confidence that comes from all of that, from one another, from the content we create at Girl Boss, from everything that we do, becomes the opportunity not to underestimate ourselves, but to just estimate ourselves, hopefully correctly. But we don't want to estimate ourselves. We need to overestimate ourselves. We need to overestimate ourselves into the future we know we can have. Faking it until I know you guys are going to make it, right? Um, you know, we had our first board meeting last week, and I was shocked uh, when our investors said that we had a strong story to tell for our next round of investment. Like, I've never walked in or out of a board meeting feeling better or like I knew what I was talking about. Um, I had all the information I needed. I could answer any questions. And I shouldn't have been so surprised when they told me this. I should have felt like I had it in the bag. But I didn't. I was terrified. I'm still terrified, and I think I'll always be terrified, and that doesn't mean I live in a state of fear, it just means I'm taking risks, and I think that's okay. And I'm learning to lead like I never knew how to at Nasty Gal. And after everything, I don't know, you could call it failure, I don't know what you call it, I didn't, I'm not resilient because I didn't like go anywhere, there's like nothing to bounce back from, like I was always still here. But after all of that, I have a super valuable chip on my shoulder. One that I hope people will continue investing in. And I'll only knock it out of the park if I overestimate myself into the future that I know I can have, that I know our team can have, that I know everybody in this room can have. Which brings me to this. One of the most important lessons of, I've learned is that, and I think I wrote it in the book four years ago, and I'll probably be saying it until I die, we have to compete with ourselves. If we compete with other people, we just end up in the middle. We just end up average. You guys have to see the white space and fill it. Let that be your fuel. Com 
Compete with yourself. Don't compete with anybody else. And let others underestimate you. But never underestimate yourself. And rewrite success for yourself along the way. Overestimating yourself into a reality wilder than your wildest dreams. And this is a start. It's like a fun house. I hope you'll join me, the team at Girl Boss, and everybody in this room to make this happen today. And in the future, I hope you carry that after you leave here. And I want to make a few thank yous to our editorial and talent teams for putting together such incredible programming that we have here today. There's so many, like so many, so many great speakers, um, so many great workshops. We're so lucky to have all of these women here with us today. I want to thank our partnerships team for bringing the best brands in the world here to do things that we want to do anyways that bring value to everybody here. You know, tickets don't even really begin to cover the cost of the conference, and so our partners are incredibly important to us, and we get to do really fun things with them, and I hope you'll go all check it out upstairs. And I want to thank our engineer, Jackie, who's upstairs manning our merch booth. We have Girl Boss sweatpants. They're really cool. Um, I don't know if Jackie's ever worked retail, um, but she's super cool. Uh, go check her out. <laughs> go check the sweatpants out. And I want to thank our creative team, and especially Chloe Parks, our art director, for making this event so beautiful. Yeah. And our producers at the Gathery for actually, like, making this happen. Like building the stage like I don't know how you build the stage and thank you guys thank you all for being here thanks for flying from 19 countries driving for flying from 230 cities and 36 states um, I hope you guys have an incredible time today uh, I think it would be really hard not to let me know if you don't but don't be too public about it <laughs> and um, we have Asia Mayrock up next, who I saw at a conference and ran up to her and was like, oh my God, you have to speak at the Girl Boss Rally. So I hope you enjoy her. She's extremely inspiring. Thank you, guys.